So I work as a critical care paramedic and an educator for an EMS system. And I got into the medical field because I was working security at a park with a large lake and somebody fell through the lake. And I realized I knew how to do everything else to get the person to shore, but not how to save a life. So that's when I learned CPR and started becoming an educator for that because what I was noticing around me is people didn't know how to do CPR. And so just the basic life-saving skills just weren't there in our community. So that needed to happen. And then with the onset of the AEDs into the community, again, that's one more step to help people. I continue to do it because my, in 2010, my father cardiac arrested in the hospital while we were visiting my mother. And again, it's those compressions, the early defibrillation, that brought him back and he was discharged from the hospital 48 hours later. But during the course of what I do, I get the pleasure of seeing police officers who carry AEDs come, defibrillate, use the AED before I even get there as a paramedic, and I actually have an awake, alive patient to take to the hospital. That very, you know, but again, it's taking police officers, first responders to get there five minutes after the 911 call. If we have more people with more access to an AED and be able to do CPR, we would have better outcomes when we have those sudden cardiac arrests. And in my world, we have a lot of sports, so we still have kids that are arresting on courts and not getting that AED as fast as they should. Those AEDs should be traveling with the physicians, with the trainers. Every, every time they travel, they should have an AED. But that means that it needs to be affordable, easy access, easily portable. That's not always the case in the current trend that we have right now with the market of AEDs that are out there. And they're not always easy to get to. And so how do you port one around if you're a travel team, high school team, middle school team, you know, those where the money isn't readily available in that public system. Well, I think as educators, we need to be out there in all of the public venues, readily giving the information on how to educate yourself in hands-only CPR and access to an AED. Know where your AEDs are in your community. You know, absolutely. In our, over in Michigan, uh, we actually had a physician in Holland who was dismayed by the fact that no one knew in the school where the AEDs were. And 911 dispatch also did not know in order to be able to guide. So it went through the community and marked out on a map where all the AEDs were, where they were located in a building. And he gave that to the 911 dispatchers. So when a, an arrest happened, people knew where to go grab that or the 911 dispatcher could say, hey, this is where it's located and you can go find it. And with our access with so much portable cell phones these days, we should be able to have something like that flash up. You know, there should be a locator to an AED that it would flash up to say, okay, this is where your nearest AED is. So that if you're there in the building, you know where to find that. But I think that as educators, we need to do a much better job at advocacy out in our communities. Again, I think the education is in the media, the social medias, and utilizing those because so many people use them, regardless whether you're six to 68, 78, everybody's using social media of some sort. And it's ubiquitous out there, easily available. So I think we can do a lot more in the news feeds of giving out that information of the difference between a heart attack and a sudden cardiac arrest, that there is a difference and you can survive a heart attack and you actually can survive a sudden cardiac arrest with having those AEDs immediately available.